Let's have a quick chat about memory management and performance. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1.4. Your screens may look a little different. Your device has a limited amount of memory shared between iOS, Animation Pro and any other apps running in the background. If the amount of free memory starts to get low, iOS will send apps a low memory warning. If those apps continue to ask for more memory, iOS may simply shut them down. <coughs> Animation Pro will ask iOS for more memory every time you add an item to a figure or an item to a frame. Now Animation Pro can't automatically remove items when it receives a memory warning, as it really doesn't know which items are the least important to you. Instead, it simply displays the memory warnings at the top of the screen as shown. So if you should see one of these warnings, please take notice. It is a good indication that you may have added one too many large images into a figure, or too many figures into a frame. In fact, you could be teetering on the precipice of iOS unceremoniously shutting Animation Pro down. So what can I do about it? Well, for a start, it can be helpful to close down a few other apps that may be running in the background. As I mentioned earlier, iOS only has a limited amount of memory, shared between all of the active apps running on your device. By shutting down a few apps that you no longer need, you can free up additional memory for Animation Pro. Secondly, if you haven't done so for some time, it can also be useful to restart your iPad. Hold down the sleep-wake button for a few seconds and you'll be prompted to turn it off as shown. Thirdly, take a look at the images that you are using in your figures or frames. From time to time I have received emails from animators who have run their devices out of memory after adding only a handful of figures to a frame. Here's an example. This frame only contains two figures and a shadow, but is consuming a lot of memory. If I tap on one of the figures and select an item, such as the figure's foot, you can see that the blue border that runs around the boundary of the selected item is huge. In fact, if I open the figure in the figure editor, I can see that each image is a whopping 2048 by 2048 pixels in size. So this single figure actually contains something like 16 ultra high definition images. By the time a second figure is added to the frame, and a third for the shadow, Animation Pro is actually dealing with nearly 50 4 megapixel images. Not only will this consume a lot of memory, but performance will also be impacted. Rendering this animation to a video, for example, will take a long time due to the number of pixels Animation Pro needs to process for every frame. Now I've generally discovered that the images, like the ones shown here, have actually been imported into Animation Pro from other apps. Now there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there are a lot of excellent drawing apps on the App Store that do a much better job than the image creator provided with Animation Pro. But please be careful when you choose a canvas size in those apps. Unless you have a real need to zoom the virtual camera right in on a body part whilst animating, there is no need for images that exceed the size of the frames in the exported animation. For the best performance and memory utilisation, I generally recommend that large body parts, such as the figure's torso, are kept to 500 by 500 pixels or below, and smaller body parts, such as hands and feet, are less than 200 by 200 pixels. You should also limit the number of unnecessary blank pixels in your images. As you can see here, the figure's foot only occupies a small portion of the overall image. But I've already created my images. What can I do? Well, Animation Pro 1.4 adds a new image resampling tool to the item adjustment screen. But let me digress for a moment to explain a few technical details about the items in figures. When you add an image item to a figure, you are actually adding a layer containing the image. Now when that item is scaled to make it look bigger or smaller, the size of the layer is modified not the size, or the resolution, of the image contained within it. So if you put a large image in a small layer, 
It will look small, but the image itself will still be large. Now that can be quite useful if you need to zoom right in on that part of the figure. That is, the image will still look good when displayed at a larger size. But if you don't have a need to do that, then you'll use less memory by cropping unnecessary blank pixels from the underlying image, or by reducing the actual resolution of the underlying image. And that's where the new resampling tool comes in. When creating your figures, you can use this tool as shown to remove unnecessary pixels, or it can be used to reduce the resolution of the underlying images. So, by reducing the size of your images, you'll find that Animation Pro will be far more responsive, videos will render faster, and you'll be able to add far more figures into your frames without memory warnings or unexpected shutdowns. This video by Salom is a perfect example. Special thanks go to Salom for sharing the animations shown in this tutorial. Please check out Salom's work on Instagram and YouTube. <coughs> I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.